creating custom animations through any Google Maps scene is a great design capability. I'll be showing you how to take any part of the world and create an animation from it. This video follows on from a previous tutorial on Google Maps tile streaming. It's easier, so take a look at those first if you'd like to learn the entire process. So here we have our piece of Kyoto I left off on the last video. I'll start off actually by increasing the quality of our stream tiles. As you can see, they're a bit blotchy. And we can up this quality by going over to the Cesium 3D tile set up here in the outliner. And if we type in detail, you can see here there's a level of detail category and a maximum screen space error. If you hover over the space, you get a description of what this number does. Essentially, the default is 60, but if you reduce it down, it will increase the detail. However, it will greatly increase computation. I found that a number around four works well in here. You just have to give a few seconds to reload the tile set and you'll greatly see a difference in the quality. You can also then go over to the burger menu up here on the top left and you can do a high resolution screenshot. Just don't set the size multiplier too high, or it might crash your driver. If there's catch up. Now to make an animation of the stream tiles, you have to go over up here to this movie icon and click new level sequence. Then just give it a name. So I'll call it here Choto level sequence. Press save. And then at the bottom here, you will have a movie sequencer pair. I'll just pull this up so that we can see our timeline and what's going on. If we then press the plus button, the track, we can go add actor sequencer and select our sin camera that we made. And it loads it into our timeline. So by default, there's 165 frames. So you can click and increase that to 300. And then we need to select our clip and just drag it all the way over to the right. Just like that. We can then go to the start of the clip. And if we go over to where our Sin camera is, you see at the bottom there's a transform. We expand that, you see there's different ways we can animate all these features. We just click that plus button on the top of the transform. I will save the position at the first frame. You can then go over to the end of the clip. And then we can just move our camera in to where we want our cinematic animation to end. So I'm just going to zoom in right here up into the temple on the last frame. And I'll just then click the transform button again to key in this frame. And if we click play, you can see the camera being animated along the 300 frames. So using this keyframing method, you can set any of the other features. It could be within the rotation, the location, or it could be other camera components such as the aperture or the focal length. So you can change it either by moving the camera like I did here manually, or you can just adjust the numbers on the side here and keyframe them in. For each camera animation, you'll make a separate sequence up. And once you're happy with the clip that you made, you can go up here to this movie clapper icon And then the movie render queue will appear. If this doesn't appear, you can just go to plugins and then install the movie render queue. You'll see that the sequence that is active will appear as a job. Otherwise, if you click the render button, you can add in a other sequencer. And you can go to the settings and change the configuration. So here there's a few things you'd like to do. First is get rid of JPEG. 
and then you can add a PNG sequence, get a higher image output. Then we will add some anti-aliasing to increase the quality. If you don't know what anti-aliasing is, you can go over to the Unreal Engine documentation. But basically, it is the number of samples used to produce a final frame. So the higher the sample rate, the longer it takes to render, the higher the quality. And there's two types of sampling. Essentially, temporal sampling, it is used for motion blur. So you have a lot of action, it's good to have this higher. And then the other type is the spatial sampling, which is essentially the opposite, when you don't have as much motion blur. And these two work together by multiplying each other. So if you have a higher temporal sampling number, it will be multiplied by the spatial sum. And back in our anti-aliasing, since we don't have so much motion blur, we can set the spatial sample count to 16 and the temporal sample count to 2. So multiplied together, there'll be 32 samples. And then we can check the override anti-aliasing. We then go over to the output. We can use a custom frame rate of 29.97 frames per second. And then just check our save location. We can then click accept and then render local. After some time, it will all save out into our folder. So we have a PNG sequence, all of our frames. And this can be dragged into any video editing software and combined together to produce an MP4. And with that, you can render out as many animations as you like from your own stream Google Power Maps. You can piece them together within a master sequencer, or you can do individual sequences like here and put them together in your post-processing software. Hope this video was useful and let me know interested in any other specific tutorials on the Unreal Engine.